Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new revision. I love revisions, uh, especially of keyboards that I've enjoyed, and even some that I didn't enjoy at first, but do after a couple of revisions. This one's the Mod 007, which I it was the second aluminum 75% that I ever bought. Um, so, and I still have it and I still use it, even though I also have the V2 and now I'm going to be taking a look at the V3. So it's a 75% with a knob. It was one of the first ones after the GMMK Pro came out. Um, it was, uh, Akko teamed up with the studio, which I think is the one that is now the sister company Monsky, but. I don't know that for sure, just from reading comments on the internet. You know, anybody can say anything on the internet. Anyway, I've always enjoyed this keyboard. I think it's a, it's a pretty good one. This is the latest revision. I'm hoping for a few surprises. If I, I know Mons Geek, I've got the uh, M1 V3 on its way, because I know they went through two revisions of that one, which I got to take a look at the first one, but not the second one, but the third one, has a lot of revisions, which I'm really looking forward to, and I think it's gonna make a big difference. And it's also been brought down in price significantly, so by almost a third. So today we're taking a look at the mod, the Akko Mod 007. Like I said, it's it's Akko branded, but I think it may be the same designer as Sponsky, but I'm not sure. Now looking on the side, we do have a sticker that says Akko Mod 007 v3 qmk so that is very interesting now i do have a mod 007 that i put a new pcb in that was from akko and that one had via it might have had qmk as well actually but it didn't have leds so this looks like so i may have really taken a look at the version too Anyway, this one's the version three, and that's what we're gonna be taking a look at today. But before we take a look at the keyboard, let's see what's inside the box. So here we are with the box, and this is a full build kit. So it's been a while since I've had the fun of building a kit. I, I enjoy, I truly enjoy building kits. So today we're building the Mod Zero Zero. zero blah, blah, blah. Today we're actually not only gonna be reviewing, we'll be building the Mod Zero Zero Seven. So let's get started. So opening it up, we have a very, I mean, this is a really sturdy and classy uh, box. It, I mean, it's one of those really thick layered cardboards. It's not going to bend real easy. It's probably about three times the thickness of regular cardboard boxes. We have a foam layer here, and then we have PCB. We have an FR4 plate. We have a PC plate. Looks like PC. It may be Palm, but I'm pretty sure it's PC. And it looks like we have some layers of uh, foam. Or, oh, that's an IXPE for above the PCB. And that's a um, probably a poron foam or between the plate and the PCB. And next compartment, we have the case. So I do have an aluminum 75% white case here. And we do have a dust cover, which I truly appreciate when they include dust covers. And here we got all the fun bits, the hardware, everything that we're going to have to put together. Now it does come with plate mounted stabilizers. Let me see. But the PCB does have the uh, holes for screw in stabilizers. But for this build, I am going to go with what's in the box, so it's kind of as stock as possible. But um, Akko has been really, really upping their game with stabilizers, so I think these plate mounted stabilizers will be just fine. Um, looks like we've got some gaskets in there, we've got some screws probably to attach the plate in the PCB. We have a nice metal knob that matches the white on the case with a plastic inner sleeve. We have a rubberized USB-C to USB-A cable. Um, really nice and one of the thicker ones. We have a separate switch puller. I didn't see a key puller, but there, there are no keys here to pull, but we've got some that we'll be loading up on here as well, some switches. 
and we have the manual and this is qmk so that makes me even happier i wasn't aware of that but again i like to just kind of not read about stuff i like to be surprised like along the way just with you guys so but we'll definitely get into the qmk and take a look at the source and everything but today we're going to be building a keyboard it's been it's been a minute and i do enjoy it but lately i've just been doing a lot of reviews so here we have the case and mine is white it has a very nice finish there's no roughness on it whatsoever um, I do have a label I'll have to take out, but we have the um, daughter board is already in there. And uh, there's a couple of just bolts that are holding the case together. They're not all in there. I'm guessing the rest are in the bag, which we'll get to in a second. But there's the screws that are holding the gold weight. Well, obviously, I, I don't believe it's gold. It's probably an aluminum or a bronze. Um, I don't know. I get guess it could be brass perhaps i don't know i'll have to take a look at it but it is really nice looking i like the the case has not changed that much except for adding in the weight well and that um there was a separation but it's more of a gap and now you actually have that gold in between that's actually a really classy touch in my opinion this is going to be a nice board to build all right so we got three foam layers one for above the pcb one for between the pcb and the plate, and one for below the PCB. And here we have what I'm pretty sure is a PC plate. It's quite flexible. And I like that they include not only a PC plate, FR4 plate as well, because you've got one that's going to be quite flexible for the folks that really want flex. You got one that's not rigid, but it's definitely not as flexible. Um, though it does have flex cuts on the plate and on the PCB, we actually have per key flex cuts. So this is going to be a pretty flexy board, regardless of the plate, but definitely super flexy with the PC plate. We'll have to find out what it sounds like and how it feels, but there are the uh, screw holes. We don't have any alternate layouts, but none of the mod series have ever included that. Now that they're using QMK, um, it would be nice to see that on the V4. Hint, Aka, hint. <laughs> but we got a four column. We got an F13. We really have a nice PCB, well built. The lanes are nice and clean. There we have the connector for use with our. There we have our connector for a daughter board. And here we actually have a nice block of that really thick, rigid plastic that helps to prevent um, pressing on the uh, plate or pressing on the knob, prevent any um, structural strain on the plate. So that is definitely an improvement that i've not seen in any of them before as well as the per key flex cuts i believe the v2 without leds and this one as well does not have any leds on it though it does appear to it has the traces for single color leds but oh not on every key on every other key hmm but it doesn't have the holes for, um, for them to be able to go in. So this is an LED less build, which I mean is fine because these are just, I don't know. I don't know why, but this is one of my favorites. 75% the way that it's laid out, um, the chamfers on the case. It's just, I really enjoy the mod 007. So. So here's the hardware all laid out. We've got the stabilizers. We've got the case screws. Um, looks like we might have shorter ones on the bottom, longer ones on the top. I believe that's how the other ones are. I don't recall exactly. Those are probably to connect the plate and the PCB together for, because I know that the uh, PC plate has like basically uh, screw studs on there. So, but those are probably for connecting these. So I usually, if, I mean, most of the time switches will just hold them in place. 
and there we have the gasket. So I usually would pick the um, PC plate to go first, but I'm going to go ahead and pick the FR4 plate first and see what kind of um, stiffness we get. Like I said, I'm just going to use switches to attach the plate to the PCB instead of using the, uh, the uh, studs, and we'll see how it comes out. So let's get started. All right, so to build this keyboard, first things first, I went ahead and disassembled the case, took out the uh, short and long screw, holding it together. In the meantime, do hold on to those screws. They, they are extra, technically. I am loving the finish on this, I got to say. It is quite nice and clean, and I, I do like that golden middle piece that they put on there. I don't know exactly how it's attached, but... Oh, no, there's, there are screws a nice golden layer uh, between the uh, upper and bottom case it's attached to the bottom half of the case and we do have that we can see the daughter board um, is already attached and secured in a plastic enclosure and we can see that the foam for below the pcb uh, fits with a nice little groove there for the jst cable that's going to connect to the motherboard so for this build i decided to go with the creamy Purple Pros uh, from Akko, which I will be doing a separate review on, on these switches because they are very interesting tactile switch with a light switch and a very nice bump. And they're actually surprising me and there's a lot of people that are really uh, enjoying these a lot. So I will we'll be doing a further proper review of these. Now, for the first build, I decided to go with the FR4 plate. I usually pick the PC plate, but as there's flex cuts on the plate as well as the PCB, I think there's still going to be plenty of flex with the FR4. Um, when I do come back, I will use the PC plate, but for the FR4 plate, we see that we do have uh, two different screws um, to hold the studs in place. One of them has like a plate or a planter. That's for the bottom of the stud. And then the smaller screw, uh, which is has a very sm much smaller head, is for screwing the plate onto those little studs. So it's very much like how the PC standoffs are in motherboard cases. So in this situation, I only went ahead and attached four of the studs. And once the studs are attached, it makes it quite easy to put the layers of foam down because those studs help keep them in place and I don't have to worry about it bunching up and causing any issues. So first I lay down the IXPE foam that goes right above the PCB and make sure that it's fully into each of the corners where the studs are. Next I install the pour-on foam that goes above the IXPE layer and will be between the plate and the PCB. And then I add the FR4 PCB, which does appear to have enough space on there for screw and stabilizers. But when I come back and do the PC uh, plate, I will also do screw and stabilizers and will be performing a couple of mods. Now, there, one should take care when screwing these tiny little screws into the uh, studs if they're off and they're not straight or if you over tighten them you may end up stripping the screws so i do suggest being very gentle with this and on the lowest torque setting should you be using an electric screwdriver so now that the pcb and plate assembly is fully finished i am going to go ahead and load it up with the akko creamy purple pros now, once I've got a switch in each of the spots, I'm going to go ahead and remove the switches for the stabilizer keys. And we're going to go ahead and install these TPU um, stabilizers. Now, these, from what I understand, or what's communicated to me, these are the version 3. So they've gone through a couple of revisions. I had tried version 1s, and I had a little bit of issue. These are very smooth. There's no lubrication on there that I've placed on there. They didn't feel um, oily to me. I think they could use a little bit, but I'm honestly surprised at how well they performed without any lubrication whatsoever. So I go through and I install all the PCB stabilizers 
onto the plate, making sure to lock them in place. Once the switches are back in place, the next step I take is to load up the gaskets onto the plate. And they're basically pretty simple. They have a, they have a, a small slit in them, which is just a bit smaller than the uh, actual tab on the plate. So you just hook it into one corner, stretch it a bit, and then it goes right over the other end of it. And then it stays in place. It's pretty good. Once once they're in, they don't they don't fall off easy, which is preferable in my opinion. All right, next is attaching the plate and the PCB together. Um, one nice thing that this is the first time I've ever seen done on a keyboard, but the JST connector actually has a, this side up. So when it's plugging it in, obviously that you should be able to read that. It shouldn't be touching the PCB. It should be facing you. So then you know exactly what side, because this is a, actually one of the better JST connectors, but they're very picky in as far as how they go in and lock. So um, don't worry if you come up, if you bring up the bottom foam a little bit, because you'll be able to get everything back in order once the JST connector is fully inserted. You do want to make sure that it's all the way in. Now, once it's all the way in, we just want to make sure to straighten out the uh, poron pad down below. And when I come back, I'm going to be adding a PET layer below that too. And we'll see how much of a difference that can make. Once we got everything connected, uh, we can set it down in the case. And you'll see that not only are there cutouts for where the gaskets go inside of the gasket in the middle there is a horizontal line and there's actually a small cutout even deeper so they have like two different pieces to lock into place which makes them that more much more stable and as far as the gaskets aren't going to move just the plate's going to move so the i've definitely seen a lot of little improvements here along the way with how they have updated and they've learned from previous versions and are incorporating some good things into um, the the newest revisions, and honestly, I've got to say, I'm I am kind of used to on a lot of two piece aluminum kits of doing having to do the force break to eliminate that sound that that ping between the top and the bottom plate, but I don't notice it on this one. To be quite honest with you, now I may when I come back to it, I'm probably going to do a test again without any mods and then I'll do a test after applying the the I mean basically just a piece of tape on either side of the hole for the force break mod and see if that actually makes a difference but I really really don't think that it's needed I think this is one of the first keyboards or aluminum two-piece keyboards that doesn't require a force break mod which is a very nice thing so I'll, if that's the case I want to see if is it the gaskets that's preventing that or is there something that I missed along the way because I don't see any rubber or anything else on the inner or on the inner edges of both of either the top or bottom case. All right, so once we ensure everything is nice and in its place, we close up the case and we're going to go ahead and drop in the screws. Remember the long ones go in the back, short ones go on the bottom, on the front, and I just like to go ahead and do a few turns to each corner, caddy corner, lightly. Um, the I have not had an Ako keyboard screw strip on me yet, but I don't want it to happen. So even myself, as many keyboards as I've done, I always I take much care to ensure that I'm not stripping the screw. The screw feels like it's going straight. If it gives me any sort of like, you know. It, starting to make it harder when I know the screw isn't even really in there. Then I pull out immediately and try to straighten it out. And then I like to do caddy corner for because I feel that that makes sure that it goes down as even as possible. And then screw in the middle screws and make sure they're nice and tight. There's no need to over tighten. There really isn't. And that there's another chance of stripping the screw, which you just don't want to do. And then as a topper, I go ahead and install the white I want to say it's steel because it feels quite heavy, but it could be an aluminum um, knob for the potentiator meter. Now for this build, Akko also sent me out um, a new profile of keycap sets. I mean, actually, I think they've been around for a little bit, JDA, but they're new to me. 
I have never seen it. And this is the World Tour Edition. And they are some fairly thick PBT die sub keycaps in the JDA profile. Um, and I actually like them. I also will be doing a separate review for the keycaps, but I will include links below uh, in case you guys are interested. But I'm, I, the colors and everything, this keycap set I think would, would really work well on a lot of base colors from black to white to gray to blue to red to yellow. I think because of the, um, it's very festive and I actually like it. I'm not usually that much for mixing too many colors together, but I think this is done in, in a tasteful way. So not only are they decently thick coming in at 1.6 millimeters, um, they're, they don't have any spurs, any, uh, any of those sharp edges that some of the, the cheaper keycaps you can buy. Sometimes you'll actually still have pieces from like the molding that holds everything together. These are actually uh, done quite nicely. Very little bleed over um, on the bottom for the die sub. So I went ahead and loaded these keycaps up. And just one little thing that I came across. Um, the travel on these Akko Creamy Purple Pros are, is quite short. And with the stabilizers, they were too short. So there was a difference in height and the space bar did not want to work properly. So just so everyone knows, I went ahead and switched out the space bar because it didn't matter with the shorter um, keys on stabilizers. But for the space bar, it was just asking a little too much with that short travel and the difference in travel with the stems for the stabilizers. So I put... Akko Piano V3 Pro under the space bar stabilized key. So here we are with the fully built Akko Mod 007 V3. I, I, I love James Bond's book growing up and of course the movie. So the 007, like I said, it was the second aluminum 75% uh, or second aluminum mechanical keyboard I bought, period. The first one being the GMMK Pro. Yeah, I know. This uh, really caught my eye. Um, I've, like I said, I've got the other one. I've, so I've got the V1, and then I got the PCB for the V2 or the VIA version of it inside of a blue case. But this white case, I've got to say, with that gold um, middle layer and the gold plated, I mean, I know it's not real gold, but golden like aluminum weight, it is just. It's lovely and it'd be nice to have a screen. A lot, I know a lot of manufacturers are now putting screens on their keyboard and I know that some people think of it as a gimmick, but I think it's part of the aesthetics for me because even if you just have your information on there or your words per minute or just a little logo that kind of matches with your keycap set or is a reminder you know, to stay positive every day or whatever it could be, we like personalizing our things. So having a screen on a keyboard is a cool thing. I'm not saying that this fails because it doesn't have a screen. No. Akko and Monsgeek are one of the very few companies that have yet to jump on that bandwagon. Now, not that I think they have to, but I would be interested to see what they did if they did. I just, they refined their products. I've seen a lot of revisions with Akko products. And I've just seen them get better. For the most part, I'd say 99% of what they do, not only with their switches, but their keycaps, with their keyboards, they continue to grow and they continue to improve on their products, on their process, and how they deal with uh, customers. Um, I've helped a few people just, you know, just kind of point them in the right direction, how to get support, what exactly to ask for, what to have ready, because I know these are questions they're going to ask. And... People have come to me with, well, with all the instructions you gave me, I kind of figured it was going to be a very difficult process, but I was actually surprised at how easy of a process it was and how nice Akko support staff was. So um, Akko has done a lot of growing, not only as a company, but also with the products that they're delivering. And I just continue to be surprised um, and not surprised and like, oh, I can't believe they did that, but surprise and oh well it's only just gotten better and 
I continue to enjoy using their products as well as Monsky because Monsky is also, I mean, like I said, they're sister companies. I'm not exactly sure how they work, but they do work together because I do talk to some people that have both an ACO email and a Monsky email. And they respond to me. They share resources, and I think that's a good thing because there's definitely there's definitely a separation there. I mean, Monsky being focusing more on the M series and you know the the QMK Maya keyboards and the M1 V3, uh, which I have on its way right now. I just received tracking has a lot of really cool updates that I think everyone's going to be happy with. Also, the fact that it's gone down in price. So um, I think that that one may actually be contender of 75% aluminum keyboard of the year. I know there's a whole bunch of other ones and there's some really nice ones in the market right now, but it's just a couple of things that I've seen, a couple of people that I've talked to. I think that the, 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 v, the M1 V3, I keep wanting to say V3 M1, dyslexic. But the Monsgeek M1 V3 that's coming, I think, is going to basically be the king of most, of best priced and best loaded barebone, as well as you know, fully loaded. Obviously, those will be a little bit more, but they do have good deals on, on Monsgeek when you uh, buy a barebone. They usually give you a choice of adding switches and keycaps, or they have a separate listing or a fully built one. And you're going to be saving anywhere from 30 to even 50% of the cost of the keycaps, the switches, uh, sometimes more when they're on sale. I will, like I said, I will be coming back to uh, these Akko uh, Purple Pros. I'm doing a full review on these. And I got to say, when I first got them, I was like, hmm. But not only do they have short travel, which I know that you know, they say short travel for gaming, but it's more about fast actuation for gaming. The shorter travel for those of us that, I mean, I code. And some days I will literally line, write several hundred lines of code in a day and my hands will hurt. <laughs> my wrists, my hands. Uh, but when you have that short travel and you have the tactile click that lets you know once you've hit it, you can let go. I'm just accustomed to, as a good majority of the good tactile switches have high, higher weight or heavier weighted springs um, going from 48 all the way up to 70 um, in some cases. This one has a 35 gram spring, yet it, the bump on it is the complete opposite of what a brown is. It's a very distinct, not quite sharp, but it's a big hump. It's like... I mean, there's the tiniest amount of pre-travel and then you hit that. So it's almost like it's a pregnant eye, if that makes any sense as far as the bump goes. But it has a short travel and it has a nice, nice out of the box sound. Um, it requires no lubing. There's no ping whatsoever. So I don't even, I'm not even sure if they do come pre-lubed or not. I need to look that up, but I'll be doing all of that in the review, but I just wanted to, um, to, to make mention of that. And there's a lot of people that I like their reviews on, on specific products that are saying these are some of the best tactile switches and for the price, I mean, I must agree. And as I've been playing with this one, I've only had a chance to play it during, play with it during production, but I like it so far. Um, there's definitely some flex, as you can see. Uh, this profile, I actually like. Uh, it's it's different. It's got a little bit of the language of uh, an SA family profile, though it's a lot lower. And it has a nice sculpt to it. But, I don't know. I just, um, I quite like this profile. I, I like it more than I thought it would. I thought, mm, I don't know, this is going to be a little maybe something to get used to but as we can see with the even with the fr4 plate i mean we've got a nice amount of flex so i mean that's some flex and again we have underneath the pcb or attached to the pcb we have that nice big block of foam that's solid foam 
um, more rigid foam that's going to prevent any issues with the knob because I do believe that was an issue with some of the V1, uh, the first revision of the Mod 007 from 2021, I think when they came out, I believe so, um, that they would get loose after a while. But this, you know, prevents because of the flex, prevents that it's going to loosen up and those solder joints breaking. So I, I foresee that there shouldn't be any issues with that, in my opinion, because it's they. they like I said, they have reiterated, they come back and they don't just do like one little thing and say it's a new revision. No, they actually go through and make a lot of fixes. Um, and the fact that it's QMK and VIA, again, you can download the VIA file uh, from the website and you, the QMK source, uh, which is Johnny Lee, 1986, I believe. I'll put a link to that as well. So for those of you that use QMK, you understand uh, the power that you have probably going to be one of those keyboards that's best used with um i don't know uh i'm trying to think of some i don't know the switches that don't have led smds that are going to be you know your pricier switches usually uh because we don't have rgb on here which again i like rgb but i don't have to have it um i, I like that i can look down and see that it's on and it's connected but, but i in no way miss the leds now, I did see traces on the PCB for single color LEDs or two pin LEDs. Now, that they didn't make the holes. The whole, the, the skill, the silk screening for the hole is there and the traces are there, but they didn't punch out the holes. I kind of wish they did. Um, I would take the half hour or so that it would take. I have plenty of their, their through hole, but they're very small um, LEDs that would work just fine just so that i can have um you know maybe just a caps lock indicator again it's not a needed thing but honestly I, like i said the leds i don't miss it in this keyboard the way that it is right now it sounds great stock but again i'm going to come back to it i'm going to probably replace the under the pcb pad with um, a sheet of pet pt and maybe some polyfill. I'll probably do a Tempest tape on. Um, I'll do some screw and stabilizers. And I will probably do an either PET or LDPE plastic layer between the PCB and the IXPE to get that hi fi sound. And I think that this is going to basically knock all the other 75% off the block if, if it's not the V1 M or the M1 V3. From Mons Geek, which like I said, I'll have soon. And then I'm going to do a comparison of all the 75%. I'm not going to, whether they have a knob or not, I'm going to do a comparison. Leo Bog, the Rainy, uh, the Warmier, the Yunzi. I just wanted to bring out really quick um, my Mod 0071, or just 007, um, and the difference in weight is actually pretty significant. This one is much lighter, and I mean, there's just, it's minimal differences all around. Like this one doesn't have that middle layer like this one does. Um, there's just slight alterations to the angle. Um, this is not the stock knob, but the knob I know went inside of the uh, cavity and there was a bit of a gap as the knob is kind of all kilter. And I think it's because it didn't, didn't have that padding, that dense foam like this one has so it kind of i mean it works but it's bent a little bit so but anyway uh, there's definitely been some improvements over the previous version i just wanted to bring that up real quick um again i will be coming back to this one i am gonna do some mods to it because i'm pretty sure the pet mod i mean it don't get me wrong it sounds great just like this and i think a lot of people would be happy with it just like this but i want to take it to one step further because I want to compare it um, because in doing comparisons when I do this uh, like I said I'm going to be doing the 75 uh, review or 75 percent of the year because this year has kind of been the the budget year for 75 percent aluminums um, we could say that rainy ushered that in but the rainy is either available or it isn't it's either a hundred dollars or it's two hundred dollars um, I I, the emails that I had within the company are bouncing back to me. I don't know what's going on, but I do know that I have received dozens of reports now from users saying that they either did not receive their keyboard that they ordered back 
in January on Kickstarter, ordered it from their actual website, um, or ordered it and received something that is defective, damaged, doesn't work out of the box. Um, and I've heard it just so much that it's just, yeah. there's, there's better options than the rainy right now. And they're in stock. They're available from Amazon. They're going to be around the same price or maybe even cheaper than the rainy. Some of them are literally like rainy's half siblings because they're built almost exactly the same. The only real differences are like the badge area or how the bottom weight is shaped. That's it. But other than that, they have the same construction. You can tell they were made in the same plant. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and comments. If you have the Mod 007, which version do you have? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? What anything specific you'd like me to do? I mean, I was going to go with the polyfill, but part of me is like, it's heavy. How if I? What if I make it heavier and put some kill mat in there, or maybe even some kill mat with some polyfoam on top of it? Who knows? Dense this even up even more and try to go for a really deep, thocky sound. Although it's got a pretty deep signature to begin with, just as it is stock. Um, I will be replacing uh, stabilizers, screw and stabilizers, but anything you'd like for me to look at or compare with the previous versions or anything at all. So if you have any comments or suggestions, please put them down below. I do my best to respond to all comments and suggestions as quickly as possible. And if you did enjoy this video, a thumbs up and a subscribe truly goes a long, long way uh, to helping me get this channel to grow. I'm going to be working on a few series coming up. I, I, I have already started to get everything that I need together for the, it's going to be a series of between eight and 12 videos. I haven't exactly figured out how long, you know, some of them might take a little bit longer. Some of them might be shorter, but uh, it's going to be entitled everything you ever wanted to know about mechanical keyboards, but we're afraid to ask. And I'm going to try to cover as much as I can. Uh, I want it to be a guide, not only for people that have no idea about mechanical keyboards and want to get into a hobby, but for those of us, and I include myself, that know a lot about, you know, different pieces, but might have, you know, certain just sections completely blank because we just never knew. And at that point, it was like, I'm afraid to ask. So we just kept on going with it. So I'm hoping to, for it to be a source of information that can be useful to both, you know, beginners, novices, and pros alike. And um, hopefully if it's good um, and you guys like it, then I'll do like updates or revisions every six months to a year as things change, as new mounting styles come about, as new switches and all of that. Um, HE switches seem to be a big thing and I'm, I want to do a section about that. But anyway, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and leave you with a sound test of the Mod 007 V3 loaded up with the Akko Creamy Purple Pro Tactile Switches and loaded up with the Akko JDA Profile Die Sub uh, Keycaps, um, the World Tour Edition. And I do wish you a beautiful day and until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.